So I want to start off with you. Where did you come up with the idea to do a movie about manufacturing in the United States? Well, you know, my business partner and I, Life is My Movie Entertainment, we really look for topics that have a, a different understanding of the general public's knowledge. They look at the sad day of manufacturing and what's happened when they look at cities like Detroit that are featured in the film. But what they don't realize is that as consumers, they can take an invested interest to really change the face of manufacturing in the country. So we feel that documentary really has the power to open people's eyes and give them the knowledge of realizing what part they play in something like a topic like manufacturing. Mark, how did you get to be involved in this project? Yeah, I was blessed with a phone call, really, uh, and uh, you know, Nathan and Vincent found me. And this American-made movie, the neat thing is it's a subtle approach. Uh, you know, it shows how people, consumers, can have power and why Made in America matters. Me being in manufacturing and going through uh, in 2007 the loss of half my business to foreign competition really woke me up and that's what this movie movie can do when people see it they'll realize you know where we are what we what we're doing now and what we need to new, do for our children's future tell us a little bit about your business and how you learned about these changes that well you may not have thought of before yeah you know general welding and fabricating our motto was you dream it we build it okay. so we're retail commercial industrial but uh... we do a lot in the metal working industry and uh... you know i fabricated these uh... fence uh... posts and made a product that was uh, you know we had for ten years uh, through the uh... you know nineties uh, and uh... once i it was a large account for my company almost more than half but foreign competition kept lowering the price lowering the price they wanted more and more cost out of it i drove with quality i had the Boca certification the welding specs the you know psi and the metals but a good top quality product and then we lost uh, i was forced uh, to lower and lower and at one point you can't lower anymore so it ends up being, uh, you know, China uh, that actually took half my business, and it affected me directly. When we need work as a company, you don't have work, and then you start laying good people off. Vincent, what did you learn from making this movie? You said it's, uh, uh, Mark said it's a subtle story. Yeah, you know, I've taken a more conscious effort now to look at the label and look at where things are, you know, produced or what it means. And so it's not just about manufacturing with the country, but looking at things in our own communities, you know, like... Right, but I, but I got a pressure. I mean, haven't you also been in the circumstance where, you know, you hear people say, you know what, I'd love to buy that product, but I'm going to buy the one that's less expensive. It doesn't really matter where it's made. It's a commodity and, you know, it flies off the shelf. You know, people do make choices now right. based on price point, but I think that when they realize that they're embracing something in their community, they will make an invested interest to invest in their state, their local area, or this country. And it's also, it's cost comparative. Like, let's take a, a shoe, for instance. New Balance is one of the companies we feature in the film, and New Balance sneakers are pretty much priced the same as Adidas or Nike or a lot of others, and it's a good product. So to see and that, some of them are made in the United States in, United States in Massachusetts. States. Exactly, and so it's only 25 percent. But the point that they're taking an invested interest in this country, I mean, we could get behind that, you know, and feel like my money when I spend it and know the people behind the products or know that it's benefiting our country. I mean, I'm not trying to be a protectionist. I mean, we have to be realistic. It's not. It, it, Apple can't make everything here and get rid of everything in China. But the fact that they're taking an invested interest in the country to make something here, that's a start. And if we as consumers embrace that. We can change America. I really think so. Hey, Mark, uh, this idea, though, that there's foreign competition, if it's fair competition, you've got the, trade, uh, the fair trade lobby that says, let it in, let the consumer decide. Did you find, though, that in the steel business, in the welding business, that it's not necessarily fair all the time? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be an even playing field. You know, I believe in 50-50 fair trade, you know, that it can work, but it, it's definitely out of balance in this country. Um, you know, if it's labor or uh, different incentives for the companies to stay here. So the movie kind of shows where we were, where we are, what we need to do in our Made in America store, you know, trying to gather products that are 100% made in our country. But it really shows you where we are as a, as a, you know, as a company and as a country. But it's not fair trade, and that's what we ask for, more of a fair trade. Uh, Is it also, uh, does it also uh, sort of take away from the country's ability to produce new products in the future because you don't have the actual talent? to manufacture things? Yeah, it's a big problem for me, finding skilled workers. Really? A major problem, and that's one problem with the growth of the country, too. We've got to get back to skilled trades and, uh, you know, allowing that in our school systems, and it's okay. Right now, I'm having trouble finding welders, machinists, uh, major problem. All right, well, I know people can actually go and find out exactly, maybe they can apply for these kinds of Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Vincent, uh, from uh, talking uh, to the various companies that are involved in this, you find anybody who says, you know what, I'm still going to keep my stuff overseas because I just don't, I, I, I can't compete? You know, there were a few that were going over at the time we were making the film, right. but um, ultimately I feel like it's a division between a publicly traded company and a privately held company. 
if you and I own a business together, we can have you know great ideas of what we want to do to help our community, our state, or this country. But if we're publicly traded, we don't really have many ideas that we can you know take action on. It's really about um, what's best for our shareholders, and I think that's kind of one of the themes that really comes out in the film. And you know, I, just to pep it up, it's, I think that people are going to really get behind this idea that it's not political. And it's really getting them to think about looking at the label or looking at where things are made. And so when it comes out tomorrow in 65 million homes on cable VOD, people are really going to embrace this feeling of like, you know, America's comeback story, not this, you know, treacherous, oh, what happened to Detroit and what's happening to jobs. I mean, the, like Mark said, there are jobs available. We just don't have the skilled workforce. And that we did come across. Places where you see a machine and there's a job there for, you know, $70,000 a year. Right. And yeah. it's like, oh, well, I don't have someone employ to employ here, so.